Oh my God, Joe, we're back again. <laughs> oh my God, here we are. What what is going on? 2021. I'm feeling I'm feeling good. I feel pretty good. My sciatica is okay. Uh, the rash is going away, thank God. So you know, positive vibes. Hail Rick. Hail Rick. Mm. Thanks for coming by. Hopefully you had a good holiday season with you and your family, man. Yeah, Chauncey, brother. Chauncey, what's up, brother? Again, hope everybody had a great holiday. Hey, I like it, and I appreciate uh, that. That's what's up. Thank you. That is what's up. And I'll tell you, Rob's the Rob observation right now is talking about the Deadpool and everything, mm-hmm. creation of Deadpool and all that. I think he's on part two. Um, really good okay. stuff. I got to catch really. up. I'm a couple weeks behind. Yeah, yeah, it is awesome. Um, oh, man, jeez. It's so weird. Oh, it's so wait, weird wait. to not have a show for if two any, weeks. If anybody hears me saying I love you, you're so pretty, my my sister's dog's right here, so I'm petting an animal. I'm not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Self gratification, I think, is yeah. what he's trying to think that he's not really, doing. I'm, I'm really talking to Joe. I think we all know the truth here. <laughs> you know what? I just thought, like, I, I went upstairs. We're a little bit late coming on because my daughter goes to bed right around the time we start the show. So sometimes my wife gets a hold of me and says, hey, come say goodnight to your daughter, which I, I want to do. I want to kiss her goodnight and all that kind of stuff. So I went up there. I went to say goodnight. Money? Yeah, you know, obviously. <clears throat> I got some coffee <laughs> and I left my coffee upstairs. So at some point, I'm going to run back upstairs and get coffee. But until then, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chill here because I feel like naked doing the show without <laughs> coffee. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like It's, it's a weird crutch. Like I don't do anything mm-hmm. about coffee. I, I drink or I drink, I drink coffee. I draw. I have to have coffee when I'm doing that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if anybody else is like that. Uh, I'm hoping I'm not alone in that, but maybe I am. Like the Bee Gees, you don't want to be alone. Is that a Bee Gees song? It's, it's probably that, that, and probably from Whom the Bell Tolls are my favorite Bee Gees songs. Wait, the Bee Gees have a song called To Whom the Bell Tolls? Is that a Metallica yeah. song? Yeah, of course. But like, you know, like Metallica's theirs is for something and the Bee Gees is for a broken heart. So, you know, it's not to doubt. <clears throat> Coffee would be ice cold by the time. Yeah, you know, it might be. Although <coughs> it's in a thermos right now, so I'm hoping it stays a little warm. Uh, we'll figure that out here in a little bit. It'll be all right. I don't want to leave just yet because we started the show. And that would be rude. That would be very rude of me. Um, so, Sean, uh, yeah, I know that you and I both got a gift. Well, I bought mine. You received yours. Recently, Surprisingly, I got a gift. Surprisingly, yeah. Um, and I don't know how many people out there follow the Wildstorm fan page or Wildstorm group. Sorry, it's not, it's not a fan page, but it's Wildstorm group on Facebook. But they do these uh, artifact books, which are really, really cool. And like, if you're part of the group, you can you know, opt to buy them. And it's just, it's a... It's a book that's not for sale, and it's basically a collector's item. It's 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 a one-time thing. In fact, I think you have to almost promise not to sell these when you get them, because that would kind yeah, of be why dis- would you? Yeah, it's not something you want to do. It's, it's it's something for the group, and anybody that joins their group, it's really cool. But they were putting together um, a book with on uh, Nick Manabat, which if I can hold this up, we both got ours. Show this you, week. yeah, yeah. Oh. Blow your blow you up. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, I almost removed myself. Hold on a second. Yeah. Oh, that is the wrong button. I gotta get back in the groove. It's been a second. But this book is a collection of Nick's work. A lot of a lot of his early stuff. Um, before he unfortunately passed away. Uh, rest in peace. I mean, fantastic artist. I would have loved to have seen what he developed into. The longer he got. Uh, into his career and got an experience in, in a lot of different techniques and stuff under his belt because his black and white work in here and it's a collection of like I said cybernary I think there's some wet work stuff in here that he did uh, if I can pull out some I'll just hold this up for a second <clears throat> so it's a great collection of some of his art it's just fantastic in the raw you know it's just I think you know to be honest with you I love looking at this way better than I did like the colored versions when you actually read the right. secondary books. This is a thousand times better than that. I mean, it's it's completely awesome. Um, I want to say a big shout out to Nick or to David Co 
Kopiki? 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 I don't know. I'm you know I'm horrible with last names. Yeah. You know that. Anybody that follows the show, you know I'm horrible with last names, but you did a fantastic job on getting He's a good dude. Uh, it's yep. a great group of uh, fans, solid people. If you're on Facebook, you know, give it give it a go. You know, if you're into Wildstorm, um, it's one of those groups where you don't got to worry about people's bullshit. And it's yeah. just, you know, fans talk about love. And I just want to give a shout out to Mark Poulton for – for sending me this as a Christmas gift. I had no prime idea. Time. Yeah, prime time potent. He's, yep. uh, oh, it'll be your Christmas gift will, is running late. I'm like, yeah. So, so I got but happy on that day. To anybody that's interested in this kind of stuff, if you're in the group, when these things pop up, jump on it. Because I don't think they do reprints. I think it's a one-time deal. And I, I missed the last one that they did. I can't remember who the artist was. But I missed the last one that they did. And I'm, I, I kicked myself in the ass that I didn't get on it, which is why I wanted to get on this one. And I think they're going to be working on one for Brett Booth here pretty soon. So And it's, um, it's a great tribute to uh, yeah, you know, someone yeah. that, that left us too early in time. And for – Aaron Berg. Aaron Berg. How are you doing, brother? Thank you for coming. Oh, mods. Yes, yes. <coughs> we we, we got to come up with something, to, like, as a thank you to, to the mods. You know, like – I don't know if they want any art from our trash, but you know, we'll, we'll try to figure <laughs> something out for just being great. You know? uh, yeah, I know. I, I have, yeah. You know, but, but, does. but just know yeah. this everybody <laughs> knows that Chauncey's in charge. That's right. <laughs> but you know, I also got some great stuff. I'm dyslexic. It, 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 it's just what it is. It's just what it is, you know, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't cool wanna, unless you pee your pants. <laughs> but I want to give a big shout out because I thought that was a really awesome tribute to the to Nick and um, David did a fantastic job putting that together. And there's a really cool write up. If I can just get back to the book real real quick, I don't want to yeah, bring yeah. You up. in the. I'm gonna blow this up real quick, and maybe we'll read this at a different time. I don't want to take too much time. But there's a really awesome write up by. Uh, Joseph Mendoza. Oh, okay, yeah. Of, you know, it talks about it talks about discovering Nick and you know and like all this kind of stuff. And it, it's really heartwarming. It, the tribute in this and uh, David does a write up too, and uh, just just heartwarming stuff. It's just really awesome to see the tribute. So if you get a chance, check it out. I don't know if we're allowed to do um, like reviews of this book on YouTube. Well, I'll have we could reach out. Yeah, we'll we'll reach yeah, out. Yeah, because I would really like. To. Yeah, I'd really like to have a stream where we can just jump into this book and show everybody that doesn't have the book, you know, the content because it's, you know, it's really awesome. And I think they did a hell of a good job, and I think they need to be uh, recognized for that. <sighs> yeah, I know. Uh, I, I don't mess up your name anymore, though. I think I've got it. I think I've got it down. But when you first popped up, I was like, yeah, yeah it's just it's, it is what it is. But all right, um, Sean. I also got some other stuff. Oh um, shit! My bad. Uh, from a uh, friend of the show, uh, TJ Sterling, uh, Ray Comics, his Okemus, mm. uh mm -hmm. Kickstarter books uh, came in. I want to say finally, the, the 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 Kickstarter was during the summer, and you know, took a couple months because you got to do printing and all this and that, and you know, COVID. But man, am I getting old looking? Fuck! I need to moisturize. <laughs> I got the package. I got a couple packages. Um, yeah. Zero. Um. Issue one, issue two, three, and four, which is the, the what the campaign was for. And you know, yeah. TJ is an awesome dude, phenomenal artist, great story. Been on the show, uh, again, yeah, friend of the show. For, for, you know, uh, I think uh, my convention agent uh, Heather reps him as well, so you know, he's part of the family. You know, but uh, yeah, if if you guys want some cool stuff that's like uh, like 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 Sentai type of stuff, like Power Rangers or 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 motherfucker, mask or or common rider type stuff, you know, hit him up. It's it's beautiful shit, and he's 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 good people. Yeah. So we need more. We, he, it's very inspiring. So shout out to TJ. Speaking of of, of beautiful work. We have an awesome guest on tonight. What's the first guest? Yes, yes, and very excited to get him up here and start talking to him about everything he's doing. Um, 
<clears throat> I recently just met him, not in person, obviously, because we're in different states. But I was able to talk. He was on our show. What show did we do that he came on? I think it was the Thanksgiving one where it was kind of an open stream. Yeah. Yeah. And he, yeah. Okay. And Marco jumped on with us for a little while. I, I can't remember how long he spent on there, but that was the first thing I, I got to talk to him. A really cool dude. Checked out um, his, his projects and it, I really like what I'm seeing. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So he's a, Sean. he's a great friend. Um, Hype man. He's, you know, helped me out this year. You know, as Joe has more ways than one way with everything. Marvin Wynn, thank you for uh, coming by. Hey, what's going you, on? You got a good show. But I Hopefully. love him. He's talented. Uh, he's one of my Latino brothers. So let me get into a little bit of what he's done. So Here we go. Here we go. Marco Lopez has worked on projects with Wine Forge Comics for Nick Cannon Ooh. and Ernie <laughs> Reyes Jr. He then wrote a story for Xenoscope Entertainment's comic book horror anthology series, Grim Tales of Terror. Afterward, he wrote this because, you know, <laughs> afterward, he co created, <laughs> put the initial team and talent together and brought to Lion Forge the graphic novel Puerto Rico Strong. That's fucking Puerto Rico. It's horrible. <laughs> well, well, I'm Mexican, so, you know. Hey, really I'm part Puerto Rican, so it's all good. Yeah, that's a, no, I can't say that. Um, all right. Which also contributed a uh, supernatural story. Well, he won an Eisner for, for that. So, you know, shout out to him. There you go. It's fucking awesome. And, and it helped out the readings. Um, Puerto Rican Strong sold out of its first print run of 10,000 copies, went into a second printing, and won fuck, Marco and his fellow editors an Eisner Award. I should always read before I jump ahead. He then worked with Iden Plaza publisher of Chido, Chido, Chido Comics to co create and write. The hit Masked Republic Luchaverse License, a series of sci fi and horror comics starring famous Mexican re wrestlers. Oh, word. All right, cool. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm getting an update. I'm getting an update. I'm getting it. I'm so aversive. Live. I love it. Right. Well, you know. You can, right. you can tell Sean was very prepared for this moment. Look, I just, I was lucky I wiped my own ass today. <laughs> So anyway, he's here for the first show of the year to help promote uh, his new Indiegogo campaign, Blanco Volume 1. So without further ado, wonderful, beautiful Marco. Hey! Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Hey, man? guys. How's it going? Sorry. Um, Go sorry really for butchering good. that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. It was awesome. It was awesome, man. Start the year off right. I love, I love it. it. I love it. I'm a stutter. So how are you doing? Days, the, the, the campaign's doing well. We needed to do better. We need to, to sell out millions of copies. Because we're buying two, too. I, I just like to make goal. Um, yeah, it's doing pretty good. You know, it's only, uh, I think today's the fourth day. Um, mm -hmm. So it's solid. Um, you know, I still got, I've been sending out emails to stores being like, check out our retailer tier. I've been hitting up, uh, sites to cover it. I've got to hit up more tonight. So it looks like tonight's going to be a long night. Uh, when they tell you, you that it's a lot work. of work, dude, when they tell you that it's a lot of work to do a crowdfund, ah, you believe, you believe it, you believe it, but then you like, you don't realize, and this is the, probably the third one I've done. You know, uh, but this is the one that's most personal right now because the other ones, well, they didn't go anywhere. So I'm like, this time it's gotta. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. It's it's just so much work. And then you doubt yourself. You're like, was I on the wrong platform? You know, um, we still got so much time more to go. I just get, I just get like really crazy when I'm just like, why isn't it doing what I wanted to do? <laughs> you know? Because so, I, like you um, said, because it's personal. You know, it's not yeah, like yeah, absolutely. It's like you're writing for like a black cat. <laughs> It's like, all right, if it doesn't sell, it doesn't sell. But th this is a part of you. So it's like, I need this to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I was working for Marvel doing Black Cat, I'd be like, I got paid. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> not, not that much from what I hear. Uh, yeah. Another story altogether. So is this, um, I might miss this. And I dropped the link to your Indiegogo campaign in the, in the chat. I messed it up the first time. But the second link I put in there, guys, that's the right one. Um, awesome, thank is you. Is it? You're welcome. And we'll bring that up a little bit later and we'll, we'll 
we'll jump into it and we'll we'll check it out. Hey, simple Jack. Hey, simple Jack. Hey, simple Jack. Simple Jack. But uh, is this? And, and forgive me if I miss this. Is this your first campaign, or how many campaigns have you done to the point? This is, is it this is well, every time? I would say this is my first solo campaign. Technically, I did one back in two thousand. 12 but it doesn't count that was like the infancy i think at that point oh, okay. had only been out okay. for like what two years you know right, yeah it was and then it I, was new back then yep and then i did one a couple of years ago or was it a year and a <laughs> half ago um and we didn't make the goal on that one but that was an anthology so that was more like a group thing this is me basically taking the so that was on those assholes my... yeah that was no, <laughs> those guys so this Sean's Sean's only saying that because he knows who those assholes were. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, they're like friends of so I can say it. So they're assholes. Um, I, mean, I get it. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> this is this is me basically taking the reins of my indie career. Uh, I've pretty much given not given up. I just want to say I've come to the reality that like I don't as much as I because there's still quite a number of books I read from Marvel and DC. But 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 you get to that point in your career where you're like, I don't think I really care to work for them. Like if they come. And if they come one day and they go, hey, we'd like you to write this book, I'll be like, cool, let's do it. But it's not, you know, when you're your 20s and you think of pursuing it, you know what I mean? Oh, very yeah. cool, um, very cool. Know. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for purchasing it. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, that, that was a crazy book. That was like a thing we, we put that all together in like three months. Um, wow. So that was a wild ride. That's on, uh, yeah. Oh, shit. But yeah, that, like it should have been like an eight month schedule, but. You know, when you're after the two hurricanes hit and you're doing it for charity, like, you know, you yeah. can't be like, eight months later, we'll get you the money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, good point. Uh, I, think, I think they were told that already. <laughs> Sorry, but, you know, but, you know, I, I've come to the, I've come to the, <laughs> I just got that. It went clicking my head right now. <laughs> but I just came to the realization that you can't keep pursuing uh, publishers like Marvel, whether they're Marvel and DC or other publishers. Sometimes you just got to, take the reins of your career into your own hands and do it yourself and see how that works yeah. out. And, you know, and eventually if they want you, they'll come for you. If they don't, then, you know, you just move on to life. That's life, you know? Yep. Yeah. That's a great way to look at it. I mean, that's pretty much, I think the way we all look at it right now. And a lot of the people we have on the show, like all of us are, are independent creators. And it's, you kind of look at it as that's the way to do it right now. I mean, when we're younger, we spend a lot of time stressing and worrying about doing samples and trying to get picked up by the big two because you think that that's what you have to do to to make it in the business. You know, you got to draw for DC, you draw for Marvel, get your name out there, you know, then maybe have something of your own later on. And now I think the good thing is with crowdfunding is you have a more of an opportunity to get your work out there without having to worry about getting picked up by a publisher. You just direct to the fans, the people that want to support you. And, you know, we do what we love. So I, I think that's awesome. And I think we're living in a good time. I know we've stated it a bunch of times before, like this is a good renaissance, so to speak, of the indie creator to put our characters out there, our stories and our love out there for the world. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like I love, but I love, uh, cause I always say like, man, if I, when, you know, when you talk to friends about comic books back in the day, you're always like, man, if, uh, if I was a creator coming up in the eighties and nineties, I would definitely be working for Marvel and DC. Yeah. Um, yep. if I was a, if, yep. I was a, if I was a creator, if I was a creator in the nineties, I would have definitely been starting off with, uh, self-published books, doing stuff like, uh, like Creed, you know, mm -hmm. Razor. Mm -hmm. I would have done those type. I would have been doing those type of books back in the day. I would have done that yeah. first, you know, uh, the Crick Crow, all of my well, Crow's like late 80s. Um, but I would have done yeah. those type of things, you know, for, for my career. Uh, probably would have sticked with drawing instead of in high school uh, after you know, my uh, art teacher, because uh, I went to the high school of art and design in New York. And then uh, oh, no, sure. art, the English teacher, yeah, because I was going to be an art comic book artist. That was my thing. Like, I moved when I was a kid, uh, you know, I wanted to be a veterinarian. I moved to New York. And then I'm going to sell drugs. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, I moved, I, I moved to New York and I started getting way more heavily into comedy. Uh oh. Frozen. Stop in the name. Looks like I was three. That would start really getting addicted because that was the Liefeld, McFarlane, and all that stuff. You know, Rise right. to Power. Um, and, but then when I moved to New York, I was just like, this is what I'm going to do. And I told my parents, and they, they were not happy about that. <laughs> um, but I went to the high school of art and design, and then my English teacher was like, hey, you got a knack for writing. You could be a good writer. 
And I was like, sweet. And then I stopped drawing for some reason. Um, oh, no. But, but, uh, but yeah, if I was coming up in the 90s, I would have been one of those writer artists making those killer indie books and, uh, you know, and just amazed at the number of copies they're doing before everything crashed. Um, yeah. That would have been me. But that's why I love, but to make a roundabout point, because I blabber on, you guys know this, um, is that, uh, <laughs> I, what I love, what I love about um, what's going on right now with the, uh, um, you know, the, the self-publishing through crowdfunding is it feels like that again. It feels like that '90s when people could go out there and put their books on like the five, five six, whatever number of distributors we had back then. And now you got yeah. two. You got Indiegogo. You got Kickstarter. Billy Tucci uses both. You know, most creators just stick with one or the other. Uh, you know, some use Kickstarter and then do. Uh, in demand on Indiegogo, but it's great. It, it, it's giving that, that feeling again of the '90s of creators just being like, "I'm gonna take this idea. I don't care if these publishers don't think it's gonna work. I'm gonna prove them that it is gonna work," and they go out there and do it. I concur, like a motherfucker. I second that. Like also like a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys, excuse. Uh, and if anybody. I know we're having a little bit. I, I, I'm looking up here, and I know we're having a couple of glitches, glitches, freezing and stuff. So let us know in the chat if uh, if everything's coming out all right. Again, first show of 2021. Who knows what's going to happen? But I do notice that I don't know. It's weird. So I don't know if that's just my computer. Or you guys are seeing that or whatnot. But let us know in the chat if everything is coming through okay. If you would, um, like I mentioned before, I need my coffee. So I'm going to be right back. All right, I'll start with Marco. All right. <laughs> All right, let's talk, man. <laughs> so uh, before we get into the book, are you going to do the uh, 60 days and then keep it in demand, or are you just going to do 30 and then what's the plan? Well, I'm just feeling um, out? So I'm feeling out right now because I did, when I started this, I did the 35 days because I was like, let me give myself a five-day uh, fuck-up schedule because, you know, everyone goes for 30, but I really feel you should, you should do 35 to give yourself, uh, oh, I should have done this instead of this and, you know, course correct, you know? Um, and then, so, we're you know, I'm going to see how it plays out. I know Indiegogo has that whole thing where they're just like, hey, you need more time? Here's You can do it for one time and you get more time on your campaign. Um, so the plan is to try to get to a certain point at the campaign and then mm -hmm. look at how much time we have left and then extend it. And then after that, go in demand. Like I have it locked for in demand. Like he gave me the option. Like, do you want to go in demand once you meet your goal? And I was like, yes, of course. Why am I stupid? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the more money I get, the more money I get, the better, you know, until, until this goes, until I got to send the files to the printer, you know, of course it should stay in demand. That's one of the things I loved about, cause I was looking, cause I was going to go Kickstarter. And what happened is Kickstarter was like, you know, oh, well, once you finish your campaign, submit it, get it approved. And then um, once it's approved, then you can put the pre-launch uh, page up. And I was like, that's a waste of time. I got to go through like 30. I got to go through like, let's say it takes a couple weeks to set up the, the page. You know, I then got to wait for like a few days or a week for you guys to approve it, depending on who you are, or the holidays and stuff like that. And then after that, then I get to set up the pre-launch page. I was like, I was like, that's ridiculous. So then I went up to Indiegogo and Indiegogo was like, nah, set up the pre-launch page right now. Um, nice. Oh, thank you, Heron Burke. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, so then, you know, they were like, they, they were like, go ahead and do the pre-launch. Sorry. They were like, go, go do the pre-launch page and then work on your campaign while doing it. And I was like, that's easier. I was like, why am I <laughs> wasting my time doing fucking backwards? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Now that since I dipped out for a second, you guys talking about the difference between Kickstarter and Indiegogo then? Just like what you have learned? Or... I dovetailed into it. <laughs> well, no, I, I asked if he was going to do the, uh, you know, 30, extra 30, and then into demand, you know. Oh, okay, got gotcha. you. Um, which I'm sure Joe yep. and I are probably going to do. Oh, I'm going to yeah. definitely do that. I mean, that, that's what I think is awesome about Indiegogo. Is that you have that you know extra time when you reach your goal you throw it into demand you get the book out to more people you know you have yeah. you have opportunity to, and also if you're still working on the book it gives you extra time to work on it so I think it's a great feature yeah and somebody somebody said I the Kickstarter no has idea. something like that but I don't, I don't care 
I, I don't think I don't like from I mean maybe it's new, but from the last time that I used them, they didn't have that feature. And I had no idea it existed until, you know, right when I was about to launch the Indiegogo and it was like the little thing was like, Oh, if you need more time in the middle of your campaign, you get the one time, you know, extension. And I was like, Well, that's crazy. And then huh. uh, I also thought Indiegogo review reviews your campaign. But Mark told me, like, review? What the hell are you talking about? Nobody reviews the campaign. <laughs> you click the button. The, the, mach the machine. T <laughs> yeah, yeah. You click the button. The machine tells you if you fucked up. And if you didn't fuck up, you hit go. <laughs> nice. Well, that's awesome. We're, I'm definitely going to be picking some people's brains when it comes to setting everything up. Because, like, I hate going into things I haven't, I've never done before without, like, a little help, a little instruction. Mm -hmm. You know, just in the same way at work, you know, like get put on a new job i want somebody to explain it to me three times in a row so i have a good understanding of what i'm doing before i go fuck it up you know right, right. so yeah but, uh, like the beatles a... you get by with a little help from your friends <laughs> and you get i'm just dropping <laughs> well that's a hard fact i'm just dropping music <laughs> all day today wow. <laughs> Becky boys and maybe new edition a little bgs well let's take a let's take a little bit of look a little look at the campaign and then tell us a little bit about the book and and all that, you know, let's let's dive into it here. But uh <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, here is the campaign. And it looks like uh, you just you you just started, right? So you got 32 days left. Yeah, uh so like three <coughs> days ago. Um nice. started. You got a twelve thousand dollar fixed goal, you got thirty backers, um, thirty-two days left. I, I have to say, like when when I was prepping for the show and getting the show banner all together, I was looking at art and, you know, checking out this campaign. I love the visual of this book. It looks very Thanks. fun. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's, it looks like the whole, like I'm a huge fan of like game of Thrones, Lord, of, uh, Lord of the Rings, you know, like fantasy, you know, period kind of period piece books like that. And then you throw in the fact that you've got like animal based characters. Um, and I don't want to skip through everybody that worked on this real quick. We'll, we'll check We'll look at that. But I wanted to come down here real quick um, to the sketches. And there's something, there's something about this that I love. I just have to say, it. like, I really do. Like, this looks awesome. And I'm going to, I'm definitely going to back this project mm -hmm. um, for sure. But like, it looks like a Sweet, real fun thank you. book. Oh, definitely. And so, yeah, David, you David, about it? You know, David the uh, is the, yeah, yeah. So David is the artist and it's, and it's funny because he was the artist originally, those sketches you saw, those were from 2010. He drew those in 2010, oh, no had to drop out of the project because uh, he got a job. I think it was, in, he got a job and I think it was in Canada. So then I put the project aside like almost 10 years later, I pitched it to him again, not remember, not realizing that he was the guy that drew the sketches 10 years ago. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's and fine. then when I went, I, when I went and looked, when I went and looked for the old sketches, um, when I went and looked for the old sketches to show them to him, I saw in the email where they came from his name. And I was like, no fucking way. And then I went and showed it to him and he was like, oh shit. And we just had one of those funny, like, the world is so small moments, you know, because of the internet. Right. Um, so, basically, the inspiration for this is the things, you know, you're always, you're always inspired by the things you love. No matter who you are, you're going to be inspired by what you love, you know, when you're writing uh, fiction. Um, and the biggest inspirations was, you know, stuff like the Herculoids, the old Hanna-Barbera Ruby, Ruby Spears cartoons that, you know, Jack Kirby right. was involved in. You know, 70s and 80s, uh, Jack Kirby's Fourth World stuff, uh, uh, Conan, Robert E. Howard's Conan, uh, Don Bluth, you know, Secret of Nim, you know, um, basically oh, Brian Jack's that. Red love Wall. It. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, Brian, Brian Jack's Red Wall uh, series of novels, uh, Disney Afternoon, just all the stuff that we grew up with growing up and that, you know, uh, that was very genre -y. and yeah. i wanted to do something that was just this genre stuff that was just this thing that you don't see enough anymore which is like this pulp adventure craziness where they weren't worried so much about 
how is this possible? Just right. hey, it happened. You know? I got gotcha. you. Yep. You know, you got you got to a point. You know, you get to. I always like to explain to people, like you know, uh, I always make the joke, like, and I still, you know, so I don't want people to think that I don't read, you know, some of the superhero comics that still come out of the big two. But I always make the joke, the joke that when they started explaining how the powers worked, that's when things went sideways. Because it was like you I don't got to you. explain; they just do. Who cares how they work? Right. You know, just tell the story. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But this is beautiful, phenomenal storytelling. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just going to say, like, storytelling is really good. Yeah, yeah, like I love like like the ink washy, loose kind of brushwork that that's on. It's but it's still a solid um, composition of figures and elements that it's it fucking works. Yeah, yeah. We with this volume, the first volume, because I had I was in between some stuff, so I was like, I told David, I said, look. Let's do the first volume, the Marvel method. Let's do it the old way, you know, the Marvel yeah. method. Because I had written yeah. up, I yeah, I had I had written up this plot breakdown of what happens, you know, like one through five. This is what happens. This is what their characters are thinking about. This is what should be going on. Things like that. And I did this plot breakdown. I I think I included some references, but David brought a lot of um, the visuals himself to this. And I said, let's mm -hmm. just do a Marvel method for this one. After that. You know, we'll just do regular full script with, you know, if you got to change shit, you got to change shit. Because whenever I write full scripts for any artist, I always say in the script, I say, hey, if you got to change this, go ahead and change it as long as it makes the story better. You know? Right. Um, That's all. But yeah, for, that, this, that kind for this, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that kind of collaboration. One, is, I personally like the Mar Marvel method the best, but working with a, a writer that gives a freedom to the artist and, and being an artist yourself, I'm sure that that's, that's on your mind is that it allows them to be a lot more creative with the storytelling, you know, even with a full script. Like if you want to take a panel and change it into two panels or you want to, you know, condense something or change the camera angle or all that kind of stuff. Right. That's why yeah, I, yeah. You know, I'm the best uh, creator I've ever worked with, with myself. Cause that's how I work with, with myself. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, you gotta, you, it's one of those things when you grow up wanting to be a comic book artist, you know, and even if you weren't wanting to be, grow up to be a comic artist, you know that the visuals are first. We're not reading novels, we're reading comics. And mm -hmm. so, you know, even, whether it's full script or Marvel method, I'm like, you know, make this sexy as fuck. You know, that's the mandate. Make it sexy as fuck. Yeah. Make it cool, you know. And uh, I'll go in there and, you know, make it all make sense, you know, using, you know, the words and captions, you know. Uh, right. Even if I have to go Chris Claremont Ooh. style. <laughs> that is brutal. That that's sick right there. Yeah. yeah, that's supposed to be uh Blanco's brother uh Kane. Leandro. Um good to see you. What's up, Leandro? Hey Leandro. Yeah, the Marvel method is fun for oh. artists, excited for the yeah, absolutely. I'm completely in agreement. That's that's really the only way that I'll work with other writers if I'm not doing a project myself. Um is the Marvel method. Yeah, I've had I've worked with too too many people that would just want to put the handcuffs, or I've been approached by a lot of people that want to put the handcuffs on me. You know what I'm talking about, Sean. Wait, you know about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the one, you know, just like this is my script, and you know the panels, like you know, wide shot, worm eyes view. You know, this is in the background, and smokes over here, rubbles over here, and it's just to me that's not fun to draw because I'm just drawing what, what's dictated to me. It doesn't allow my imagination to be like, how do I want to approach this scene that you have written for me? So I, I'm all for it. I think it's the best way for writers to work. Or like you were saying, Marco, a full script with the freedom to make changes. Yeah, I, I always feel less is more. I feel you shouldn't over dictate what goes on in a panel. It's basically it, your description be, should be more what what is the emotion of the scene that's going on. And uh, let the artist ha handle the visual story. There's two types, you know, as you guys know, there's two different types of storytelling in comics. There's the visual storytelling and your character storytelling, what they go through. You know, as the writer, as the visual, uh, you know, there's a lot of emotional punch. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of uh, character going on there. And as the writer, you're supposed to work with all that to basically tell an, an emotional story that people react to. You know, and if you guys, you know, are vibing, then, you know, it's going to be a great one-two punch. Uh, so Rick brought up a point 
we're looking at the campaign here. He said, one thing I would suggest highly is get picks for your perks when it comes yeah, to that. uh that's two mistakes I made not doing because when I was right when I was doing the perks, I was like, should I do picks? Nah, I don't have to do picks, <laughs> right? Should I do picks? And I was like, ah, I don't think anyone's gonna care. <laughs> but is that, just, yeah. is that something you can add or is like once it's set, it's done? Like you can't go through well, and, and edit or now I, can, I don't know. Now I can't I can go through and edit uh, the main part, but the perk side, I can't. Um, the perk side, I think once people start pledging, then it's kind of oh, like okay. locked. You can't go in there and edit anything. The other thing I All didn't right. do was a video. That was my, my mistake, not doing a video, because I, mean, I was like, like... a trailer or something, <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I was like, I don't know how to edit. I, was, I should, because, you know, I do film stuff, but I was like, I don't know how to edit. Um, and then I was gonna record. <laughs> I was going to record a video of myself talking about it, but then as I started recording the video, I was like, this is stupid. I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, feel like, yeah. yep. I deleted the video. Uh, Rick Rick like, you know, uh, oh, sorry, Joe. Uh, no, go ahead. How, yeah. The, so we, we have the, you know, like I said, basically the script for the artist is done. The first five pages are done. Um, you know, once it gets funded, there's nothing that's going to stop us. I know a lot of people, uh, you know, they get weary because it's like there's a lot of cats that are like, here's our project, here's our preview pages, give us money, and then people give them money, and they're like, hey, it was nice knowing you, you know, see you next time. Right. Um, but the thing is with this book, me and uh, uh, David are committed. Like, there's nothing that's going to get in our way of doing this. Um, like, he would kill me if this book wasn't finished. Um, right. And I can tell you right now... If I could, with a group of people, you know, it was like four, well, me and four of the different editors, if we could put a 200 page anthology, Puerto Rico Strong, together in three months, you know, uh, then I think me and David can do a 64 page uh, graphic novel. Not to sound cocky, but, but I'm saying, yeah. trust me, you will not, I will not go away with your money. The last thing I want to do is, you know, either you know steal somebody's money or take like two years to finish a book you know right, right. like this yeah. this book gets done uh no matter what and again you know i'm rambling so anytime you can just tell me oh, shut up no, no, <laughs> this is your show yeah and i had a quick question so is it going to be all this black and white ink wash work which looks beautiful or are you guys planning on adding any kind of yes colors to it or um it, it'll be it'll be the black and white ink wash um, if we meet goal before end of campaign, then, you know, there's the stretch goals that are on there. And I didn't do a color one just because I was like, I just, I, the way he did these ink wash, I was like, it's so beautiful. And with his art style, it's color on that. You have to have a colorist who understands how to color that type of work. Because yeah. oh, if you yeah. do, do, don't, then the color muddies the lines. And then it makes the line work look more simple. And then you're like, oh, this book is not good at all. It doesn't look nice at all. Yeah. I'm not saying there aren't colors that can't. I'm just saying to get that colorist that can, we got to get <clears throat> three stretch, get the three stretch goals. And then the new set of stretch goals will have color. <laughs> you know, um, but I think they look beautiful as is black and white. Yeah, yeah, first of all, they look they look fantastic black and white. But to get a good colorist, like you were saying, that knows what they're doing to with this kind of style, you're probably looking at paying eighty to a hundred page dollars a page, you know, to get an experienced guy that is gonna fuck it up. And I'm just saying that yeah. because I'm we'll go after quality and not just, you know, someone that can put colors on a book. Because yeah, if you're going to put colors over this just all, it's just it's a beautiful just gray you know the gray tones the gray the the ink wash everything is just great in black and white so if you're going to put colors on that definitely have somebody know what they're doing i, I feel you mm -hmm. yeah uh getting fabi and icieza and that was great um i think we got in i think besides him we got in a couple of other known creators a lot of it was a lot of new people but getting yeah. fabi was fantastic <laughs> hey, hey, well, look. And, and, I, and Rick, 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 I, we're, we're going to have Shelby on in February, so you'll be happy. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, def I definitely understand that, Rick. I'm sure, I know there's a lot of people who have been like, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, don't worry, you're going to get your book. But uh, yeah. all, I can, all I can do is, you know, give my, give my word, you know, people will trust me. 
Who's that dickhead that stole money? The Hawaiian was a Hawaiian dick guy. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're talking. <laughs> Some bonehead. Like he had a campaign, and then like he didn't manage the funds properly. So like, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Whatever, some cunt. But anyway. Well, you know, um, you know, it, it's it's the it's the risk, I guess you could say, that you take sometimes with crowdfunded stuff. Um, I would say that the majority of people that back projects know that sometimes it's never going to be. Uh, perfect when it comes to the schedule sometimes it might be delays when it comes to whatever printing you know maybe you get held up something happens and it's taking longer to draw the book i think as long as that you're updating with people and you're staying you know visible if a campaign's going long i think most people are pretty pretty understanding about all of it you know take for instance shinobi sasquatch you know that's you know i think Thank you, Rick. people are pretty understanding about that you know, Rob comes on, he tries to talk about it. You know, he's open about what he's doing, um, the projects he's working on. You know, he's, he's constantly trying to keep updates on 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 um, on the art and everything. So I think a lot of that stuff com comes down to is like, you know, we are independent creators. Some of us work full time jobs. You know, mm -hmm. others you know are fortunate enough to just focus on their work. But there are things that, you know, life happens, you know, yeah. unfortunately. So. Um, I don't know if the best thing when it comes to some of these campaigns is to have a ship date that's far enough out that you could at least give yourself a nice big window after you fund kind of thing. I don't know. Uh, I know that the books I backed, I'm still waiting on a few books and then it's just, you know, I'm a patient. I'm just more of a patient guy anyway. So maybe that's what it comes down to, but. And if it um, helps the quality of the book to, right, to come out, I, I'm down with that. Absolutely. You know? like, as they, they don't jizz it out. Like, I don't want to like, like yeah. waste my money. Yeah. You know? I mean, you, you know, and I, yeah. we we said ours. We said our ship date for August, um, which for a sixty-four page book, I think is well. Um, That'd be awesome. You know, oh, a lot wow, of time. Thank you. Um, thank you. And and then um, you know, besides you know setting the date in August, I'm not taking any money for this project. Like the, all that twelve thousand is going for David, the letterer printing uh you know yeah, that the, piece the, of shit. the merch stuff everything <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. apparently that's what sean was talking about yeah yeah i i'm just salty on him because he he uh never mind i don't want to say it. i'm bringing up public yeah. fuck him anyway go ahead go ahead margo I mean, we didn't mean to interrupt you there <laughs> no no it's cool oh i know i know about that whole situation uh and a friend of ours um so uh uh, yeah, so basically, you know, uh, none of the money in this campaign is going to me. Like, I've decided I just want to get the first volume out, uh, make it successful, get it out there. And then when we do a volume two, then, you, you know, maybe I'll put myself a little a little something. But for me, I'm not thinking of myself. I'm just thinking of getting the uh, the book out, you know, it's very getting the work out, getting the book out, making it a success. The artist puts in more of the the, the work on his schedule. So, you know part of this this goal here is to go to david and then the letter and like i said the printing and the merch and right. all that type of stuff um none of it's going towards me you know and i'm fine with that uh a, a people a lot of people would be upset and they'd be like oh well, why aren't you uh putting a page rating for yourself you're just making yourself seem less i'm like nah because i just want the book to come out you know uh there's always but you're building to make money down the line you know exactly yeah, like, like you know? You're, you're, build, you're building yeah. your brand you're showing people that that you have a quality product, and once it gets more established, you know, like that's ideally smart. You know, like I, I think that's phenomenal. Yeah. So I just want people to get the book and enjoy the book and see the craziness of what we're doing. This is a, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's a it's a black and white post-apocalyptic sword and sorcery graphic novel. This is, you know, humans have been gone. Uh, for a long for a long time, you know the world is you know animal people, and there's all these medieval type kingdoms, and you know it's got and, and they're very under very uh, uh, heavily religious uh, spell, um, almost like you know the medieval times you know back with the Catholic Church and things like that, um, and it's not a super religious book. It's just you know you know the whole religion thing is there because I'm very fascinated by um, you know the stories and and Bible. 
and the Quran and all the different type of, you know, cultures and religions and gods and angels and things like that. And uh, right. so, you know, that's that's part of this thing, like Blanco and his, his and his brothers and sisters in the different kingdoms, they're called the Nephilim, you know, and uh, okay. their their lords that run the lords that run the kingdoms are called the seraphs, you know, and uh, yeah, definitely Blanco's. Blanco's uh, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's, right, that's right up my alley, dude. I'm like, yeah, like I know exactly all the names you dropped. <laughs> Exactly the first from. project that I was ever cool. supposed to cool. officially work on, that I worked on for a few <laughs> years, it just never came to fruition. It's called Seraph's Legacy. And it oh, unfortunately, yeah. Didn't, yeah. it just never happened because life, I guess. But you know. I did a pinup. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I man, I am, I am so <laughs> look. I that that I, really, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, I had fun doing it, man. It was it was it was a good time. I enjoyed doing that. One day I'll see the light of day, one way or the other. I have um, <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm talking about my pinup in general. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, do whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. I don't want it. Rick, uh, he'll reach out to you guys. I won't quit until I see you guys on the That's nah, awesome. That means Rick. a lot. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, uh, that's phenomenal. Yeah, that's that's heartwarming, man. Really, really, really appreciate that. Mm. Uh, get back to the Nephilim and the Seraph. I'm gonna get more coffee. Seraph, to keep talking. Seraphim, all that. Uh, go ahead and pick up. Oh, yeah. go up and pick up right there because I'm I'm digging what you're talking about because like honestly, I'm I'm I have a big religious background, done a lot of big religious studies and things of that nature, and I always liked incorporating because I've got some of that stuff in my book too. Where my book's not a religious awesome. book, but you draw, you know, you draw from influences because there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting things, you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff, yeah. and you can take that into a story realm and put them into your book and really create some cool dynamics. So I'm really interested to to hear uh continue to hear what you're talking about so please don't let us interrupt you again go ahead <laughs> no no that's cool <laughs> yeah you know so you you have these i think it's uh four or five kingdoms and, and you know the kingdom that blanco is in is uh you know uh the kingdom of uh the seraph at, uh i think it's azrael that's of the seraph azrael and that's nice. who he also consider considers his father and blanco um you know, him and his brother Cain and Blanco's a nickname. So the two of them are called Cain and Abel, you know. Okay. And Blanco's yep. Blanco Blanco's his nickname because when he was a pup, you know, his fur was all white. And until he got older, then it started having all these different colors come in. But the nickname stuck. Um, and I'll definitely check that out, Aaron Burke. Thank you. I love uh, you know, that that type of stuff. Um yeah. so uh, is, it, is that a metal band feels because I love I love metal bands that bring in, that do these uh, very operatic, um, you know, uh, music. You know, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a Swedish metal band or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yes, the Swedish yes. Band, I, you know? I, I love, <laughs> I love the craziness of those those yeah. type of bands. I just love it. It's so epic. Um, but yeah, so basically, you know, there's these these five kingdoms. Um, one of them is a kingdom that's basically hidden. Um, that separated itself from the other kingdoms. And there's this new religion that's spreading throughout the different kingdoms. And they believe there's a new Eden out there. And they believe the new Eden is the kingdom of the fifth, you know, seraph that separated themselves, uh, separated them, themselves from the other seraphs, believing a different ideology. Um, and then the, the religion that these, uh, uh, the Nephilims and the animal people and uh, that the seraphs preach um, you know, they praise a Lord called Adonai. And so they have, it's the idea of like, they took all our religious beliefs once man washed away and disappeared and they created their own uh, version of it, you know? Um, so basically Blanco is a fervent religious believer and he's trying to quell this new religion that's spreading throughout the land. And um, so when our story opens up, he is in those preview pages. He's basically yeah. watching these bands of uh, these people that are on this trek to New Eden, and he wants to basically. He finds out in those the beginning of those preview pages. What you don't see is, is um, will be in the other pages is that band uh, that he's watching of uh, of travelers, the band of travelers um, of, of the new religion. He like right there. That's a story they tell in the flashback. Um, that's a story they tell in the flashback. Like the, the previous page was, you know, the, the world of man. And then 
you know, man right. destroyed the world, and you see at the bottom, then it became the world of the animals, of the of the animal people. Then the, the next page is basically a story. So all this is a story. These two pages are all a story that's being told by of how their world came to be by the person in the third page who is, you know, around this campfire telling it to these children. And you see on the yeah. final page, Blanco is watching them. He's watching them. And then from you see Blanco with his, with his cross. And then he goes into a flashback when he's younger, when him and his brother Abel are being trained by their master. Uh, who, yeah, who, isn't the Lord, who isn't the Lord uh, at the Seraph Azrael? It's their, it's their, you know, their, their master. Like the key, you know how like knights back then had the head, you know, a knight who was like, you know, the most badass knight and, you know, the other ones that right. you know, were learn, learn under and stuff like that. You know, that, that's, yep. that flashback is that situation. And what's going to happen is Blanco is going to kill this band of travelers. But what he finds out is, is that they're heading to New Eden and he finds out they're heading to New Eden through the outer zone. And the outer zone is the part of the world that's the old cities that are still left. You know, the abandoned old cities that are still left because everyone lives outside of them. And so right. he believes, you know, that they need to be stopped. Abel doesn't believe that they need to be stopped and doesn't believe that they're going to trek to the outer zone because nobody that goes to the outer zone lives. You go through the outer zone, you die because of the things that live there, you know, and because of the radiation that's there. So, you know, he doesn't believe that it's possible for anyone to trek through there. Blanco does, and Blanco feels it's his duty to make an example of these people, to quell the religious, you know, the new religious, you know, uprisings that are happening in the different kingdoms. And that's right. the basis of the story for the first volume. And a lot of craziness happens. Um, this is going to be a wild story. Like, even the ending. The ending, I think people are just going to be like, well, shit, I didn't expect that first first volume. <laughs> <laughs> and I know a lot of people say that. I know a lot of people say that. They're like, our ending is going to be awesome. But I think people are right. going to – hopefully people aren't going to expect this ending. And uh, and it's, it's a great setup for volume two. And, you know, I've got eight – volumes planned you know might do more but i've got the rough of what volume two three and four will be you know i've got a, a good idea of what volume five six seven and eight will be and they'll each be 64 to 72 page volumes um so hopefully we can get this one to be a success and that that'll allow us like our plan mine davis plan is to basically try and do we'll get to a point where we can do the block we can crowdfund the block of vol volumes so that we can do two a year you know, nice. Yeah. So that's our that's goal. Right. We'll see if we, we'll see if we can get there. Well, I mean, honestly, dude, that sounds like a fucking awesome story. Yeah. Like just just hearing you explain it, I'm visualizing things in my head. You know, as I'm sure artists do when they're just kind of visualizing, you know, pretty much like what I would do. But I'm, I'm looking at the artwork and just taking your story and everything. And honestly, I mean, this is such a cool story. It's something you could you could see like on a fucking TV show. You know, like, I, I love how you crafted it. I love how it's put together. I love the world that you created. Um, it's definitely, you know, tickling to me in a spot that I really enjoy, you know. I mean, <laughs> Thanks. But, uh, yeah, dude, oh. um, it, it's, it sounds really cool, dude. I, I can't wait to see it finish. Uh, I'm definitely going to back the book because I'm really looking yeah. forward to reading it now. Now that I know more about it, it's, yeah, I love it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Um yeah, I mean, my, my whole thing with doing this is you don't see, you know, the, the type of, sometimes the type of books that I want to do are the type of books that, uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Rick, um, is the type of books that you don't see a lot of in comics anymore. Uh, um, you know, this type of book of animal people, it's been tried here and there. I know Kurt Busiek did one a while mm -hmm. back that was pretty good that I liked, um, but it doesn't get done a lot. A lot of the stuff nowadays, and there's don't get me wrong, there's a lot of great stuff being done in comic books, but I don't think there's a lot of wild stuff being done in comic books, you know? Right. I don't think there's a lot a lot of out there, what I like to call, and sometimes when I call it this, I think people are going to get the wrong idea, but what, what I don't feel there's enough of in comics are comics that you look at and you're like, that's a comic. Like, you know, if for example, like, you know, to bring it up again, uh, uh, Creed from back in the day, you know, this oh, yeah. kid who goes into the dream world and he's got the pet, the pet frog. That's a comic. It's weird. You know what I mean? It's not, yeah. it's not your typical thing. Like Jack Kirby's Commendy, that's a comic. You know, it was inspired by Planet of the Apes. But what I mean by comics right. are just the, these ideas are so ridiculous. Nobody else would think of doing them except for what in a comic book. You know what I mean? Sure. Like it's just 
pure, unadulterated, ridiculous fantasy. Like there's there's not a lot of that anymore. Uh, a great one that came out a while back, like two years ago, I think it was, or three, Shirtless Bear Fighter. Like Shirtless Bear oh, Fighter, yeah. Three Image Comics was... Yep. It's about it's a comedy about a dude who fights bear who's raised uh, by bears, fights really? bears, and you know, shirtless bear fighter, you know? Yeah, it's wild. Um, I'll check it's, it out. Dude, dude, go get the trade. It is a such a ridiculous but good book because you're like well, shirtless just, you're, bear you look fighter? at it and you're like, Yes, shirtless okay. bear fighter, go look it up. You're gonna be like, How the hell did this get made and nobody say no to it? That's, that's um, awesome. Another great book is another great book that I keep in con that I uh, that I try to keep up with is Savage Dragon. You know, it's a cop. Yeah, I stopped. You know, now it's the now, I stopped now a while ago. It's the I sun. Stopped. But yeah. Yeah. Well, but even if you that. did, ju just think about it. Just think about it. Like the fact that Savage Dragon is still around is a testament because no one makes books like that anymore. Like Nexus oh, and Badman sure. yeah, and Badger. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, yeah. nobody makes those. You know, we we still it got, just got a little boy, too gross you know? for me. It got a little too gross for me. Like, <laughs> look, I'm no square. Yeah, me. but <laughs> look, I I was reading some of the latest. I was reading some of the latest issues of Savage Dragon, and I was just like, look, man, I like sex too, Eric Larson, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a horny old man, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, no, Rick definitely backs a lot of projects. Hey, he, yeah. yeah, that's that's for sure. Um. Like I said, anybody, anybody watching this live now or watching it later, because we, we we get a lot more, <clears throat> we get a lot of views after the live show, which I definitely really? appreciate everyone yeah, checks yeah, out. The, yeah. Like if you ever just checked out the show, blah, blah, blah. People don't like us live. Man. They like me because of this. <laughs> Sean, <laughs> I, you're bringing us down, Sean. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Uh, <laughs> the truth is out. It's been revealed. Yeah. The, the link to Marco's <laughs> project is in the description and the YouTube page, and it's also in the chat. So back this book. we got plenty of time. There's 32 days left to do it. We have a $12,000. Uh, let me pop this back up since we're talking about it. And you're almost there. Yeah, we got $12,000. Or $12,000. Refresh it. <laughs> Fixed, flexible or fixed goal. So, yeah, there was 7% funded. We need to keep on rolling with this. It sounds like an awesome book. I think, you know, we definitely need to get get more eyes on this. How many shows are you going on, man, in, in promoting this? Because this is, I, I really think you need to hit this extremely I, hard. The book people need to know about because I think I'm, people will really enjoy this. I'm up for a show. Uh, once the show ends, I'll tell you the show that I'm up for because I because I because I haven't 100 confirmed it yet with them. Um, but I'm going to be on a show at the end of this month that you guys are familiar with. Wait, oh, yeah. minute, wait, be, a minute, wait a minute, uh, Jerry, Jerry, I got a lamp, Jerry. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> I figured it was that. Hey, there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. I dropped a lamp on the head when I was drunk once. <laughs> um, but yeah, I You're got, gonna I be got two, I got two, we know. Yeah, um, I'll tell you guys at the end of it because I got to send them some information okay. so that they can be like, "All right, cool, we got everything finalized for this." Hell and yeah. then I'm gonna I'm gonna be on uh, another show. Uh, I don't know if you guys check out the the Death Curse guys. Um, they do the book. Uh, right. one, uh, God, I forget. I, can't forget that I forget their names. They have a show called Death Curse. I'm gonna have to look it up right and, now. And hold on, give me one second. Ugh. Spencer Desmond, who did uh, Void Walker, the comic Void Walker of Alterna. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good writer. This com this comic is awesome. If you like oh, Giver wow. and all that type of stuff, yeah, oh, Void Walker, yeah. man. That's awesome. Yeah, right. if you like Geiger, um, Techno Man, or the, it was known here, te Techno Man in Japan, Gotcha yeah. Man, all that stuff. Like Giver, Giver has that, the Void Walker has that Devil Man Giver vibe. So Spencer Desmond, him and his, him and his uh, boys, they got this group called Death Curse. And, uh, you know, I was talking to them about, you know, uh, going on to their show. So, we're, you know, we're still in talks uh, for that. You know, the other show, I'll tell you when we're off the air. And then, um, you know, I'm, I'm setting up, you know, I got to, 
to do more emails today to set up more. We got covered by graphic policy. We got covered by fan base press. So I'm setting up more stuff to get covered by more sites to I'm sending emails to comic book shops to be like, look, cause our retailer tier is 45 bucks, six books. So that's 50% off cover price and free shipping. You know, oh, so okay, I'm doing okay. a solid. I'm do, yeah, that's how much that's how much I don't care about making any money for myself on this book. I just <laughs> want to get to get this out there. So I'm like retailers, free shipping, 50 percent off cover price, six books, forty five dollars, you know, um, hard. Facts. Yeah. So I'm going to try to get I'm going to try to yeah. get on more YouTube shows, try, you know, just try to. You know, I'm gonna. I got a list of all the. You know, I check it off every time I send emails out. And you know, so I'm just gonna keep pounding the pavement, as they say, uh, until you know I can exhaust every avenue, and then we'll see where we end up with. And hopefully, we end up with uh, goal. I just want to hit goal. Anything beyond that is cake. You know, <laughs> right, it's, it's the right. frosting. You know, but goal would be nice just to finish, have the book done. That would be the greatest feeling to be able to get the money to have the book done would be the greatest feeling. It's just be like shit, I accomplished it. Thank God. Yeah, I was gonna say I know that promoting, especially on these YouTube shows, is is huge when it comes to the crowdfunded books. And that's something that um I know that me and Sean are both gonna try to hit really hard later on in this year when we launch our books. So um I mean we'll definitely have you on again if you're getting close to the end of the uh, we're pretty yeah, booked. Of course, up. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, yeah. getting to the end of your your campaign, and you want to jump on. I'm sure we can have a special show show sometime oh, and just continue to talk about the campaign. Give try to give an extra. Not that you know, not that we can give you as big of a push as some channels, but we can definitely do what we can do to help to get more eyes on the project. You know, coming towards the end. Uh, definitely get on mail in show. Um, Publishing piece, Medi. Yeah, those would be great shows to get on mm -hmm. if you can jump on there. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll go over the perks one more time before we get out of here. Um, yeah, 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 don't go. So on. we have. <laughs> 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 so we. So, uh, the. Um, I mean, do you guys pull it up? But. Uh, so here we... the first perk that we have is our uh, early bird special. You know, which it's limited to fifty, and it's the the soft cover, you know, graphic novel for ten bucks, and then after that, it's the regular, you know, it's the you know for you know everybody else who doesn't get the uh, early bird, it's just the graphic novel at fifteen. <coughs> and after that, you get the graphic novel, you get the graphic novel and trading card number two at twenty. The reason I say number two is because everybody. who signed are the original uh character sketches you know that's gonna be on there we're gonna marvel them up oh um, we don't have one here you go up if you go up uh go, go back up those character sketches those oh yeah, yeah. here okay oh, okay all right sorry yep there we go this one right here. those trading right there. yeah yeah right. those those are, those are gonna be those are gonna be trading card yeah those are gonna be tra yeah trading card one and two and uh, we're gonna marvel them up, you know. They're gonna they're gonna look all all nice, you know, just like '90s Marvel cards, stats on the back and stuff like that, or anecdotes, cool. you know. So yeah. those are just what the art's gonna be, but the cards are gonna look, you know, awesome. Um, so that's that's the other tier, trading card two. Then we have a tier where you can get trading card one and two for twenty five. Then you can get the um, uh, graphic novel and the print, and the print is basically the cover without all the lettering, you know, the virgin image, you know. So yeah. uh, the trade and the print for 25, then you can get the trade and the print and trading card two for 30. You can get the trade. And then after that is the trade and the print and trading card one and two for 35. And then the last one is the retailer tier. And we do have one retailer that claimed the uh, retailer nice. tier. Um, but I know that retailer. So <laughs> fucking Derek. Did he choose uh, that himself? But, Did so this would be the right here then. That's the print right there. Then wait, actually, it would be without that, oh, right? Yeah. So you... yeah, yeah. Wait, the, yeah, the, the picture yeah. of Derek. Did he it choose be, that himself? It would the... It'd just be this picture, right? Yeah, yeah. Derek chose that. That's Derek's picture, the one they chose himself. Yeah, yeah. The print would be the cover. Uh, it would have the red on top, 
because you know that the whole blood, bloody red, but it wouldn't have the whole right. Marco credits and all that. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. Um, that, so yeah, it'd be that cover without without all the text. Damn, I love that. It's just yeah, so so cool. some cool shit. That's awesome. Yeah, this whole project yeah. was just and then so cool. for our stretch goals. For stretch goals, if you, like the stuff that you see at the bottom, yeah. If we ever get there, I don't know why I'm going to bring them up. When we're like quite a bit of what, quite a long bit away. But uh, the idea would be if we get to the stretch goals, trading the the first one, the first stretch goal would be two additional trading cards, which would be those images that you see of Blanco and his brother trading. Oh, there we go. Three and yep. four. Um, <sighs> There we are. Jeez. Yeah, it would be Sorry. those, but they would be in color. Oh, nice. Um, so that's the stretch goal. Yeah. So those images, the reason I have them there, because those would be trading card three and four in the stretch goals if we got to the stretch goals. And then, um, you know, that, that last image would be a uh, second print. Um, and then our final stretch goal would be an eight-page backup story where it's Blanco when he's a uh, teen, and it's called Blanco in Damnation Alley. Um, nice. It's when Blanco gets uh, lost. It's when Blanco gets lost in the outer zone when he's a teenager. And the reason I called it Damnation Alley because that's the name of a movie I think from the eighties, seventies, one of those B movies. Oh. Watch a lot of those exploitation B films, uh, post-apocalyptic right. world. Uh, so. Uh, that's the idea of the story that he's he's lost in this city as a teen, and you know it's uh, you know Blanco in Damnation Alley. It's a very explo- exploitation title in Damnation Alley. <laughs> um, yeah, awesome. But yeah, there you go, Andrew. We'll see if we ever get there. Awesome, Thank awesome. You. Thanks, out and Thank for you. the exposure. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, brother. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, man. Much appreciated. Um, but yeah. So I hope we get there. You know, I'm gonna work my butt off um, to see if we see if we can get there, and we'll see how things turn out. Well, it, dude, we really appreciate you coming on the show and telling us a little bit about your book, your project. Um, I think it looks it looks and sounds awesome. I can't wait to back it and to get it. Uh, I want to say big thanks to everybody that checked us out in the chat and uh, checked out Marco's project. Uh, please back this book. Um, it's a lot of hard work, a lot of passion. Most, most like a lot of the people we have on the show, very passionate work. And this is, you know, these are dreams that we're trying to manifest. So uh, go back if you like it, back it, you know, spread the word, share it, uh, help out as much as you can. Uh, we would all appreciate it. The show appreciates it. Marco's going to appreciate it, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, Leandro, I made you a, a mod because you just. You're cool. Nice. So, and, you know, honestly, uh, Anybody wants to be a mod and help the show out, I'll make your mod. It's I'm handing out mods like Oprah. You get a mod. And you get a mod. And you're a mod. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone gets a mod. <laughs> yeah, everyone is a mod. Entire show is a mod. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna see. We'll be going for about an hour here, so we're gonna wrap up the show here. Cool. Yeah, they are great, great prices. I was actually going to bring that up. Thank you for saying that, Rick. Um, that uh, all the tiers are very, very affordable. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing's too, nothing's too crazy, which I think is cool because sometimes you look at projects or certain campaigns, and then you know the tiers get crazy. You know, and you cut yourself off like after three because you're like, well, I know I can't afford, <laughs> you know, all the tiers going forward. Like I can afford the yeah. first two tiers, you know. But you kept it really reasonable, so I think that's that's definitely a great choice. Gives you more options to spend more Thank money. You. So that, that's, money. that's that's the thing I want to do with the tiers. I wanted it to make it where it was one affordable and two, it's stuff that is comic book to you. Like trading cards is comic books. You know, right. prints which are like posters is comic books. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to do stuff like stickers because I or other or bookmarks because I'm like nobody gives. A shit about any of that stuff. <laughs> you know, right. nobody's, no, nobody's giving out condoms. <laughs> Give not yet. There you go. Sean, Sean, Sean well, Toledo did that. Polito. Oh, did he? oh okay. that makes sense. Oh, Polito did yeah. that on uh, Lady Death. Yeah, Polito did on, on. I think he does it on all the Lady Deaths. 
Well, Sean, it was a good idea while it lasted. You were, you were almost there. You are almost yeah, there. It says a lot about myself, but you know. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well, before we get out of here, uh, Marco, is there any, I mean, anything you want to plug besides what we've already been talking about? Uh, any future things that are coming up, you know, appearances that you're going to be doing? Again, um, I know we talked about a lot so of this, but if anyone's just joining us now. So, um, I, besides this book, there's another book I'm going to be developing, but I'm going to kind of wait to see how this one goes, because this other book I'm going to be developing is in the vein of stuff like uh, Guyver and Devilman and uh, right. Power Rangers and stuff like that, Ooh. and uh, it's I'm called... Sorry. It's called Super Task. It's called Super Task Force Orion, and the artist that I'm interested in working with, and we've talked a little. He's got this Bart Serzis art style, and okay. um, the whole thing of the the whole thing of the book is the first issue is so these characters live on alternate Earth, and the first issue is you're in the middle smack dab of the end of their universe. And the right. first three pages, the first page, the first page is a splash page. And envision an Ultraman-like character, you know, having a fight with this godlike being. And then that's the splash page. And then page two to three are double splash page, where this fight has destroyed this whole gigantic European city. And the team members that are in his team are fighting all these different other things. And that's the first three pages awesome. of the book. You open on the end of their world. You know? I love that's I like cool. it. Thank you. I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to like your style of writing. So I'm looking forward to the books you're going to put out because I'm, I'm definitely probably going to back <laughs> everyone. Because you, you're like, you're, you're jumping into Thanks, my man. mind pulling out concepts that I absolutely love. Uh, Chauncey said there should be a featured perk to promote on the campaign. I mean, that's, that's definitely a good idea. You know, it, Here's the thing. <clears throat> Doing the campaign, I think, is something that's going to be, the, in, in my opinion, the hardest thing of setting the campaign up because there are people out there that have been doing this for a while that know what they're doing. You know, and then there's people like us that we're going to be first timers tripping into to, to all that. So anybody. Yeah, I'm going to copy everything Polton does. <laughs> yeah, oh, we, we could just plagiarize. <laughs> we could just plagiarize everybody else. I mean, that works. <laughs> but yeah, anybody anybody that's ever got any advice for us, for our guests, yeah. or coming to doing campaigns, throw that in the chat. We are listening and we are paying attention. A hundred percent, that's for sure. So, uh, Marco, where can we yeah. find you on all the social medias? Uh, I am on Instagram uh, as I think it's at Atomic Rex Marco. And then on Twitter, I'm at Atomic Rex ENT. ENT is short for entertainment. And then on Facebook, just look up uh, Marco Lopez or look up at Travis Dearly, and my face will pop up. Uh, if people wonder why at Travis Dearly I when say, I was in my yeah. 20s, I wanted, to, I, I, wanted, I wanted to have a pen name, you know, when I was in my 20s and be like, like oh, the name you know, you pen name would be cool. <laughs> I, that's why I picked it. I was like, I was like, you know, I was like, I wanted to be like, you know, Stephen King, you know, Stephen, you know, Stephen King had that Richard Bachman <coughs> pen name back in the eighties, yeah. you know, and he, he yeah. read all those books under that pen name. So I was like, oh, I want to do that. That's cool. So I'm like, let me pick a name where they're like, uh, when when they find out, they're gonna be like, I had no idea this guy was Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> and then like their heads explode because they're racist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, and, and but the yeah, 90s I'm on, I'm on. Oh, yeah, the oh, 90s. Yeah. The so 90s. I yep. run, awesome page. I run on Facebook a group called 90s, 90s Comics Strike Back. We talk about 90s comic books. It's a 90s comics love fest. Um, mm -hmm. You just, you know, look up 90s Comics Strike Back, answer three questions. They're simple questions. Like, I've ha we've had some you people, because Sean's a mod on, that, yeah. on the group. Yeah, we had some I don't know why. The I, I just, would, come I, on, man. I'm just in the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, 90s Comics Strike Back, Strike Back. Check it out. We're 1,600 members strong. It's just a fun group, you know, something to do to chill and, you know, uh, enjoy the stuff we loved back in the day and that, you know, we'd like to see more of today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate that. 
Uh, well, uh, Sean, where can we find your work? If people want to you check you out. At the, no, uh, Sean Aaron, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, Geeks at the Beach is uh, the convention I run or ran before COVID. Uh, in Delaware, uh, if you would like that, that would be awesome. We have, we have some, seeing how the world goes about running it this year, might have to be those virtual cons. I'm not really sold that yet, but I got I to yeah. investigate how, how my partner and I, Heather Reed, do that. But yeah, Geeks at the Beach. What about you, Joe? Joey? Uh, yeah. If you nasty? Uh, uh, all the social media that you can think of, I'm on. Just type in Joe M. Sontag. Well, Joe Sontag or Joe M. Sontag or Joseph Sontag. Any combination of my name is going to bring me up on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I got Joe M. Sontag on YouTube. I have a channel on YouTube. Check that out. Uh, I'm going to start doing more stuff. Uh, I'm going, I keep saying that. You know, I'm really busy with the book and, and life in general. But I want to get back to my series of appreciating comic book art, which if you look at my YouTube channel, I go through just a bunch of comic books that meant a lot to me um, when I was growing up. And I'm not, I don't really go at these books and look at them and try to critique the story or, you know, pretend like I'm some kind of genius writer. I just look at the art and I talk about why it's awesome. It's basically appreciating comic book art. I'd like to get back to that because I know a lot of people have enjoyed that in the past and I haven't done it for about a year or so. Hopefully, I can do that. Be on the lookout for it. But otherwise, and got, yeah. Joe and I oh, yeah. probably talk this week about like the other shows we talked about doing during the week. Like, uh, we're gonna have Jerry. We're gonna figure out what's best for all of our schedules to to to, to do like a portfolio review. Yeah. And then we're Thanks, Rick. A live drawing channel. Very cool. Very cool. A live drawing show. We got some other bullshit that we're planning, but I just forgot. It's been a couple of weeks. Yeah, we got we got a few things that we want to try to do uh, because Sean and I are both working on books and we can't do as much with the show that we would like to because if I could stream all the time, I would because it's just fun. It's fun to talk to guests. It's fun to talk to Sean. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just it's, it's a good time. But we had to we had to we had to pull the show back to one show a week just so we could actually focus. That on was the, on me. A lot is. But it was good. It was good. Yeah, the, so. the idea of stepping back from what we were doing because when we jumped into this, we we just were gung ho, and yeah. we were doing more, more. It was taking up a lot of our spare time, so just to step back and focus well, on family, focus on projects. My dad died, so I, I you know. Well, I, I wasn't gonna. Yeah, I don't yeah. Care. yeah. So, you know, okay. so. I wasn't gonna bring that, but you know, yeah. So, but anyway, there's there's stuff that we want to do this year just to kind of expand what we're doing, and one of the things we're gonna do is a draw along show where we're going to work on some stuff for our projects and we're going to draw live and we're going to invite our artists on or whoever wants to come on and draw with us. You know, it doesn't have to be stuff they're working on. It could just be whatever and just have a good kind of studio session um, where we can just all shoot the shit, talk about comic books and, and draw live. And it'll probably be on a Saturday night sometime. We'll just go late into the night. So yeah, I'm probably going to ink this. Yet. This is a long overdue commission. So I'm going to ink this up. Dude, yeah, that's awesome. Comic. I like to brag. But no, this is going to be a pain in the dick to ink on. I don't oh, it's a box. Uh, yeah, I thought that no, was it's a... one of the, it's, No, it's one of those comic what? boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Ah! Yeah, and then uh, I'm going to be working on this, which is a promo. Yeah, man. <sighs> this is a promo piece I'm working on for my book. Yeah, I like, like I keep on working on Love it. it. And I'm actually going to try to draw this up because I think uh, Chance Wolf is actually going to ink it for me. So I'm looking forward to doing that. So look for us in the future of doing some more things. We're going to try to do some more things because we've got a lot of support from you guys in the chat um, that supported us over the year. And we want to just do more than just one show as much as we can. But the most important thing right now is to try to get our books out to you guys, uh, just like Marco's doing. You know, that's our passion. That's our love. That's what, we're, what we want to do. Uh, yeah, Joe, you've been teasing the book views for a hot minute. <laughs> Play suit. Yeah, I know. I want to get back to them, man. I really do because I enjoy doing them because it takes me down memory lane because some of these books I haven't looked at in a long time because, they, you know, they're ingrained up here. But I really want to get back to them because I, it, it brings up all those memories that, of me being an eight-year-old kid sitting in my bedroom with a stack of comics next to me just flipping through for hours, you know. 
So it's it's fun to do that. Um, but Robert, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. I got uh. So, so for next week we have uh, Andy Smith coming on. He's gonna uh, come on, jump on, and uh, promote his first man uh, campaign that he currently has coming on. Uh, third week, him. yeah. In two weeks, we should have a- Nailin Mailin, John Mailin. Uh, fourth week, that's up in the air. The first week of February, we should have uh, my buddies from PLB Comics, and uh, they also run the um, Ocean City Maryland Comic Con, which is a phenomenal convention. Uh, second week of February, Jacob Bear. Third week, up in the air, might be Rob Arnold. We, I think we have to see what his schedule is like, but right. nothing does does. And then the fourth week, right, we got Shelby Robertson coming on. So it's gonna be it's gonna yeah. be a good uh, next couple next couple of weeks for us. Yeah, you know we're constantly working. Yeah, you guys on got that. you guys got that schedule planned out. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. we. We don't want to get too far ahead, but we definitely want to be far enough to the point where we don't have to sit and worry about who the guest is going to be next week. You know, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's just stress out. <laughs> you know? So, John put uh, me on pause. He's like, "We're good for February. Let's." Yeah, I was like, "Let's just hold on." Because I'm like, "Oh, let's get this guy. Let's get this guy. Let's Can this my guy. art teacher come on?" You know, he's like, "Yeah." You know, yeah. So. Oh, but uh, it was just an awesome show, Marco. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your project with us. And, and hey, wait a minute. Project. We didn't do the shit. We did do the shit. We didn't do We the completely shit. fucked up. We didn't the do first the shit. Part, 2021. Wow. 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 Dude, we're out of our, I'm glad you're, yeah, we did it. We completely wow. did. Should Jesus we do it Christ. now? Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, why not? Fuck it. It's our All show. Right. We can do whatever the fuck we want. So, All right. <clears throat> We'll start, let me start this over again. It was Friday night. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Art and Stuff Show. And unlike Hillary Baldwin, my grandmother actually had a real uh, Latin Spanish accent. I'm Sean Aaron. I fucked that up. Uh, <laughs> with me, as always, <laughs> is my brother and I. Very attractive. <laughs> Very attractive, very se- sexy, very distinguished. Always narcissistic, never vain. A staunch defender of Rob Liefeld, and a lover of all things 90s. Joseph Michael Sontag, or Joe M. Sontag if you prefer, or as the Pope likes to call me, JMS. Welcome to the show. And what a show it is tonight. Because we, have a- <laughs> we got a great show for you guys. If you if if you have some time, we are just gonna rock the fuck out of this. Uh that's good though. I'm glad. I'm glad we got that out of the way because yeah, we, we definitely we messed up the completely beginning of this show. Yeah, I can't oh, believe we were we just did. really excited. Yeah, uh, let me get my hands in there for you. Know. Yeah, you gotta get back in the groove of stuff, you know. So yeah, <laughs> get it's it. a hell of a drug. But yeah, Marco, Next. where where is your family from? Is it what? Uh, they're uh, it's, it's not the. I know the San Juan area. I was born in Santulce. Um, and I forget. Oh, well, my grandfather was from uh, Vieques. That's where he, he was from, which is an island that's, you know, part of Puerto Rico. Um, and then we have family in San Juan. And then um, I forgot the other a- areas of Puerto Rico. For some reason, my brain is just like, um, when it comes to Puerto Rico right now. But yeah, ba- basically the, the those two areas, you know. I'm, Sure, after the show, I'll be like, damn it, now I remember. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and look, well, and I really had that that Hillary Baldwin joke, like, like practice to a T. I think I was rehearsing God. on Marco earlier, but now I just fucked it up. <laughs> well, next week. <laughs> now, well, clean slate. Clean slate next week. Because we did it so late in the show, there'll be a bunch of people that hadn't seen it. So yeah. next week. Nail it next week. We'll, we'll get it. We'll get it then. Um, and we need to come up with some really cool custom ending to the show because we just kind of peter out at the end, as always, but, which I'm going to do right now. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. We really appreciate it. We, As always, we appreciate the support uh, that we get from the regulars that we see in the chat. Uh, Rick, Heroin Berg, Chauncey, Leandro. Uh, am I missing people? I'm probably missing people. Uh, a couple of people I haven't seen today, but we still love you anyway. Thank you so much for checking us out and supporting the Jared. show. Yes. 
<coughs> I'm okay. You're so unprofessional. <laughs> you know, if I ever get I, I, love show. I don't want to do the show anymore. If we ever do this show where it's professional, <laughs> count me out because that's that's not what we're all about. Count me and out like, new edition. That's like six music references today. God damn, you were on a roll today. I don't even know half the band you're talking about, but you're just killing it. Yeah, Elliot. Hey, well, thank you for oh, your service. Cool. Thank that's, you. That's thank you. I really appreciate that. So, all right. We love everybody that supports us. Thank you so much, Mark, Marco, for coming on and sharing mm -hmm. everything with us. Thank Next you. week, we will be with Andy Smith, right? Did I get that right? Andy? Yeah, Andy Smith. Andy Smith. Andy Smith. We will be here next week, next Friday. Same bat time, same bat channel. Oh, my hip just cracked. Why do we got to be bats? Can't we be like uh, kitty cats or like tigers? Kitty cats? <laughs> <laughs> I blame I, I Derek from that picture. That I didn't fuck with him because of that. Like, Yeah, yep. But, you know, that takes balls to do something like that. But, all right, we're rambling on, which, again, we don't know how to end the fucking show, so I'm going to end the show right now. Everybody enjoy your weekend. Be safe tonight, and we will see you all next Friday. And when in Thank doubt, pull out.